Bob World Builder made uh, a video about the origins of the D20 and why we use the D20 for Dungeons and Dragons, but it hinted at something that I really wanted to talk about, which is that dice are uh, spiritually tied to role-playing games. So let's talk about that. This video is brought to you by Terror Vision. Terror Vision is a Ghostbusters-esque point crawl tabletop RPG adventure set in 1986 fictional New York. It is part of Zine Quest and uh, made by our good friend Lex Mandrake. So you should totally check it out. If you are interested in D6 dice pool systems or Ghostbusters or the 80s or various other things, this is going to be a digest sized uh, point crawl map with 12 locations, supernatural entities, so you can run your own TerraVision Spectral Paranormal Investigator style game. Now this utilizes the Open D6 system, which was created by West End Games, and they use that system to create Star Wars games and Ghostbusters games and a whole bunch of other stuff. And at the very end of West End Games, they took that and they gave it away for free. So this game is based off of the Open D6 system, but it's a little less complicated, more fun. So check it out today, TerraVision on the Kickstarters, and uh, let them know that I sent you. So there I was. Uh, very, very sick. I wanted to make this video earlier, but I was uh, super, super sick. So I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm just feeling the worst because of the flu. And I started checking my phone and I'm watching this video and I'm like, wait, what? We're not even mentioning the important part of dice in role-playing games. And that warrants a video response which is what this is only later because I couldn't talk and I, I could barely move because I was very, very sick. So first of all, like, how do we how do we interact with this game? Um, you know, everything has kind of a, a special meaning to us when it comes to games like like artists have paintbrushes, uh, writers have typewriters, uh, board game enthusiasts, uh, they have meeples, it, also dice. But like video games have controllers and card games have playing cards, RPG dice like the seven dice that we use are kind of intrinsic to uh, role-playing games. And I think that's that's really cool. Now, Robert, a uh, planetary manufacturer, said that in his video that Gygax and Arneson, they wanted a, uh, a weird dice to kind of build up Dungeons and Dragons. But the shape of dice are not weird. And maybe they're weird for dice because we didn't really have those types of dice. We only had like D6s for a while. But that... Those shapes are older than the ancient Egyptian die that they found. Um, it's, it's, it's an intrinsic part of the universe. And there's five of them, five of the main RPG dice that are known as the platonic solids. So we're going to go back further than chain mail, further than that, that die that was in Egypt. We're going to go all the way back to 350 B.C., where we're going to talk about the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. The five platonic solids are the D4, the D6, the D8, the D12, and the D20. So we have the mighty tetrahedron, the strong cube, the flighty octahedron, the fluid icosahedron, and the otherworldly dodecahedron. But the odd thing about this is we have seven RPG dice, and of those seven, five of them are platonic solids, two of them are are d10s to create percentile. We have the original d10 and then the like double d10, but the d10 is not a platonic solid. So instead of asking like, why do we use a d20 in RPGs? Really, I think it's more interesting to ask why do, where did the d10 come from? So first of all, what is a platonic solid? Uh, now it's, it's, it's a three dimensional polyhedron. Okay, and what's that? Well. The, that is a solid figure that has numerous plane faces or just, you know, faces on a die. But there are just five that are known as convex polyhedra where they have the same number of faces that meet at each vertex and each face are congruent regular polygons. So this is why they're special. Let's look at two dimensions. Now you can draw a polygon um, if all of the sides and angles are equal to one another, that is a regular polygon, kind of like a triangle. So equal sides, equal sides, equal sides. And then if you look at the vertexes where they meet, um, those angles are all the same as well. And so you have a regular polygon here. 
Now you can kind of create these indefinitely. You can do three sides, four sides, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, and on and on and on. You can draw them two dimensionally to each have the same number of sides. And that's just mathematically something you can do. But once you push it into the third dimension, there are only five that still meet that criteria, and they're the five platonic solids. Now, Plato believed that there, the world, the universe, was made up of five elements, and you might find these elements familiar. They're uh, earth, air, water, fire, and spirit, or ether. And because the platonic solids were so unique, he believed that each of those was actually tied to one of these elements. So the D4, uh, or the tetrahedron, is fire, because the D4 is spiky and it can hurt you. It's pointy and sharp and fire it hurts you. Now the D6, the hexahedron or the cube, normally called the cube, is earth because it can be stacked on top of each other and that is firm and solid, but it can also crumble apart, just kind of like what earth does. Uh, the D8, the octahedron is air because this one's kind of a hard stretch for me, but it's it's a placement between fire and water, and air is considered to be hot and wet at times, so it's both like a D4 and a D20, the icosahedron. Um, and the D4, the D8, and the D20 all have triangles, so they're all kind of related, and the 8 was in the middle of the 4 and the 20. And the D20, the icosahedron, is water because it will run off of your hand very, very easily, much like water does. And finally, the best shape, which is the dodecahedron, at least that's what Plato believed, the D12 is special and unique because it has a pentagon where all of the sides meet at the vertices and they're all equal to the same thing. To Plato, this represented spirit or ether or the space or the gods, the stars, divine power, whatever you, you may be. It's the untouchable aspect of the unreachable that Plato thought it was. And this carried on throughout a lot of uh, history. Um, famously, Johannes Kepler thought that the platonic solids uh, represented some kind of divine mathematical essence of the universe, and he tried to attribute them to the planets. And so the idea that the platonic solids were nested inside of each other is actually how uh, we correlate the distance between the different planets in the solar system. Um, this is called the Mysterium Cosmographicum, which is uh, a really cool word or group of words that you can use for your, your Dungeons & Dragons game. Um, I have it as a magical artifact in my game. Uh, this was not the case, but it's still a really cool idea to think about. But why is the D10 not a platonic solid? I mean, it's a die. It looks like it should work. Uh, what, what makes it not a platonic solid? So the D4, uh, four triangles that... All corners are the same and they equal the same. The D8 is eight triangles. The D20 is 20 triangles. Um, and the D6 is six squares connected together. Um, and the D12 is a pentagon and it's 12 pentagons that all the corners work together. But the D10, if you look at it really closely, not all the corners are the same. Um, and, and the face of the D10 is not a regular shape. It's kind of like a kite shape, um, which creates like a like two shorts and two longs that doesn't doesn't add up. So although this is a, a perfectly valid die to use and all sides are equal chance of being rolled, yada, 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 it doesn't fit the mathematical beauty that is the platonic solid. Um, and then, so the face of the D10 is actually an uh, orthodiagonal quadrilateral. In 1910 or 1906, there was a patent for the D10, but it was never actually created as far as I know. It was just a patent that was sent into the patent office, or maybe one was created because that's how patents worked back in the day. Um, and since then, you know, since Dungeons and Dragons have come out, we've created D3s, D5s, D14s, 16s, D30s, D60s. You can you can create a lot D7s. I think I have a D7 somewhere. Yeah, there's a D7 in Dungeon Crawl Classics, the Zochi dice. They're not platonic solids, but they are mathematically random and it works. The D10 wasn't included in 1974's Dungeons and Dragons. That was just the platonic solids. But the D10 was added after in 1980s. It was uh, announced at Gen Con as a brand new type of, uh, uh, like, we invented this new die. It's the D10. We're going to incorporate it into our games. So why is this important to RPGs? And why is this uh, important to Bob's video? Because dice are intrinsically tied to the idea of rolling the bones. 
and we made uh, dice out of knuckle bones and various other things, and they were kind of tied to a divine aspect. They were tied to interpreting what the gods said and meant. And so to take that storytelling kind of aspect of it and apply it to platonic solids that are connected to all the different types of elements, and then you take those and you roll them uh, to understand your fate or your character's fate in a world that you're creating, a magical world, uh, that seems like it was destined to be used. That RPG dice, platonic solids, were destined to be part of this hobby where we create worlds using fate rocks. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Jordan with a silent PH in the middle. I've been sick and other things, so I haven't been making videos. I also created this, I also built these shelves behind me. That took a long time to get this up and running in my game room. And that's another reason why I haven't been making uh, the videos. Thanks again, Terror Vision, for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out Terror Vision on Kickstarter today and tell them I sent you. Stay tuned. Subscribe if you like D&D lore and interesting thoughts about math rocks. And thank you, Bob, for your interesting video, um, and which sparked this whole rabbit hole that I went down. Uh, I will see all of you in the next video. <laughs> Take care.